because I'm a nerd, I thought it would be really, really fun to use the DALI text to image AI to generate the images for my presentation. So um, full transparency, there's a couple of them that have a slight edit in Photoshop because, well, as you'll see, um, I needed them to have a certain context, but overall they're just generated from, uh, from a, a text. I, I wrote a paragraph into the DALI engine and it drew the image for me, so it's kind of fun. So the first one here, uh, um, in Alberta, and, and this, this number 4300 uh, is from Calgary Economic Development. I've heard anything from 2500 to 4300. Um, there's a lot of open tech jobs in Calgary, a lot. And the problem is when, when you look at the, the people that are hiring, oftentimes, and in, in fact, most times, it's like they're looking for like four to 10 years experience, right? Well, all those people that have all of that experience and you know the great minds and they're able to just do anything, they already got jobs or they're working for Silicon Valley or somewhere in Europe getting like two, three, four hundred thousand dollars. I have a buddy who just left Microsoft to go work for uh, Stripe. And um, he left his job at Microsoft as one of the senior directors making he didn't exactly give me the numbers, but I kind of dug a, real, a little bit and I found out he was he was making over $400,000 a year and he left Stripe because the money, in his words, was disgusting. So he actually is making more than that. Um, so those people are hard to get. They're hard to find, they're hard to get, and when you do get them, how do you win them over? Because the money, it can't, it can't, can't all be about money. But anyway, oh, I should have I should have went to my side. So oh, transparency, I put the JavaScript logo on this guy. Should <laughs> other than that, it was generated by Dali. Um, <laughs> companies are looking for people that have skills and experience, right? So if you just came out of school and you got all the skills in the world, they want to know that you've had a bunch of experience as well, and that's really hard to do when you're just new, right? Um, so, and then I guess I, I should follow my slide, shouldn't I? So the highly skilled people are scarce and, they, and with the remote opportunities they have available today, um, they can go get big money elsewhere. And that's hard on smaller companies, right? If you don't have massive, massive dollars in your company, how can you afford to pay for these senior level people, right? Um, now, what's really interesting is, and, and I can't speak for other uh, cities and, 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 and provinces, but in Calgary, we have uh, government funded training programs where they allow people who are EI eligible or whatever to be able to go to school and learn something new. Um, sometimes they're referred to as boot camps, sometimes they're referred to as short form training programs. Um, the, the universities call them continuing education, education programs. But what this essentially means is that you can have a career, maybe as an engineer, maybe as an airline pilot, maybe as a chef, and you can decide that that's not the career you want to end your life with. You want to actually pivot into tech and do something really exciting. And so these boot camps could be, um, in the case of like Lighthouse Labs, is three months of that you say goodbye to your dog and your cat, your girlfriend, your <laughs> wife, and, or whoever else, and you literally focus for three months from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. But at the end of it, you could come out with the skill set that you need to be, say, a software developer. Um, they also have a cybersecurity program and some other. I'm not plugging Lighthouse Labs, I just used to be the general manager of Lighthouse Labs Calgary, so I know their programs really well. But there's also programs like the, the company that I work with right now is called Inception U and they have a really beautiful program um, that's all project-based learning. So it's really super exciting. Um, but what, what the problem is, is they train you up and they give you this new skill set and you're like, yeah, and then crickets, <laughs> right? Like how do you actually get a job? Right? And so you can go and you can, you can sit in your underwear on Saturday morning and you can tailor your resume and try and get it exactly the way that people want it and submit it online to like hundreds of different companies. Most of them won't even give you um, the time of day because 
okay, I see that you were a Reg Seal chef for 12 years. Oh, and you worked at Earl's, that's fantastic. And oh, you don't have any software development skills whatsoever, or insert data science here. Um, the fact of the matter is, there needs to be something more. There needs to be sort of um, some sort of gap needs to be filled in between my new education and my ability to get experience, okay? Um, so we need a solution. So here's the interesting part of the story. Um, my wife and I, this is my dog, his name is Nalu. Uh, Nalu is uh, Hawaiian for ocean wave. And he used to have a little dog tag with an ocean wave on it, but we lost it. Um, but anyway, I was out with my wife walking the dog on a beautiful sun, uh, it was in August, it was a beautiful day, and I was just venting. Just, you know, husbands and wives, sometimes you come home from work and you're just venting. And I had spent probably close to three years working for three different companies, and part of my role was helping people find work uh, out of these training programs. And what I would get often is, oh, we're looking for someone who's a little bit more senior, or oh, we're looking for someone with two or three years of experience. And so I had actually worked with these people who had pivoted their careers. One guy had a PhD in, um, I can't remember exactly the faculty, but it was like, whoa. And uh, another guy, or actually a whole bunch of people, there's a whole bunch of people that take these retraining programs that are engineers. There's people who, like uh, airline pilots and chefs and all kinds of other things, massage therapists, like it, it's all over the map. But you take someone who has a PhD or a master's degree, lots of master's degree, lots of engineering degrees, and they're just like, oh yeah, we're looking for someone with more experience. The guy's a PhD, he's got, he's got like 12 years of, of, of education as the executive, like this particular guy was like the executive vice president of development in Shenzhen, China or something. And he comes to Calgary and he wants to pivot his career into um, actually being a software developer. He wanted to let go of all the responsibilities of being a leader and going to board meetings and all that. He didn't want that anymore. He just wanted to sit in the corner and went on his keyboard and build software. That's what really excited him. And they, and they go, he doesn't have enough experience. Really? That guys are engineers for 12 or 15 years in the industry doing like all the complicated engineer stuff that you guys do and they're not enough experience. So it was driving me batty. I was venting kind of like I am right now to my wife and she just goes, why don't you do something about it? <laughs> and um, apparently that was all I needed and I created this company called New Idea Machine. And so the premise behind it is like, we're a custom software development company, so we build software for clients. But the catch is we only hire people from these short form training programs and boot camps so that they can get hands-on experience building software and they're led by industry seniors, uh, uh, developers and, and professionals so that they have the mentorship and that stuff that they need. So when we build a software product, our customers actually know that the whole project's gonna be built by juniors, but they're gonna be led by seniors. So they get that opportunity to have good architectures in place and industry best practices and things like that, but they're, the, all the hands on the keyboards are gonna be junior level people. Now, this is a really interesting concept. And you know there are some companies like uh, Pixeltree who hire junior developers. Um, Vogue, uh, there's a company called Vogue, I can't remember exactly. Um, Vince O'Grady, I think is his name. Um, and they have uh, a, they have sort of like a um, an attachment program to their company so that they they train people um, and give them some hands-on experience and then the, the best of the best they pick them out and put them in their company so there's a little bit of stuff like that going on there but there's there's no one that's really focused on that because in both of those companies the people that are building software are going to be the intermediate to senior level people and the junior people are supplementing that. We're, we're flipping that around. And so what we've done is 
Custom software development for paying clients, that's pretty standard. Everybody can understand what that is. People hire us to build software. If I, if I only did that, then I'd only be able to help like five or six people a year, depending on how many projects I get, right? If it's a really good year and I get a whole bunch of projects, maybe I can do a bit better. So what we've done is we've added a new division to our company or a separate division to our company where we have, you know, just like building open source software or whatever, you have the ability to come on board, join a team and actually build real industry projects, but it's not paid. Now, at first you're probably thinking, oh my God, why would people work for free? Well, here's the thing. When you graduate from one of these short form programs, every single day that goes by, your chances of getting a job go down. Because, hey, if you're hiring somebody and they took a, a boot camp program, well, that's bad enough. But now it's been like five months since they graduated from that program and they still don't have a job. Good luck, right? So if we change that around and we say, well, now I've left the boot camp program, I've graduated, and then I joined New Idea Machine and I'm actually building hands on, I shouldn't walk in front of my video. And so now I'm building actual software on an actual team. Now we flip that, we flip that 180 degrees and every day that goes by, you're actually more likely to get a job because you're currently working for a software company, building real software in a team led by industry seniors. It's, it's, it's a totally different paradigm, right? So I don't want to read all my points, but you kind of get the deal. Um, on the software for the paying client, they get um, this value of having, um, because it's all the work's being done by junior level developers, they, uh, they don't have to pay as high a price, right? The, the juniors are cheaper than the seniors. Um, and um, the other thing too, this one's really important. The weird thing about our company is we don't have a non-competition clause like everybody else. We have a please hire our people clause. <laughs> so if, if the company that's working with us likes the person that's on the team, they can hire them. And we encourage that. So everybody, everybody that we work with is totally available to hire. Um, we can also be a talent funnel because we're pulling from SATE, Mount Royal, uh, Inception U, Lighthouse Labs, Bull Valley College. We're basically a giant funnel pulling all of those people into one place. And that, and that for, for companies that need to beef up their, um, their staff, like for example, like let's say you have a development team going already and you want to beef up your team by two or three people to make a project deadline, or maybe you have a side project you want to work on that nobody's been able to get around to. Now you've got this opportunity to borrow some people and then you're like, wow, that Tim guy was amazing. Like he's, he's there every day before everybody else and he kicks butt and he's doing a really great job, we're gonna hire him. And you know what, Steven, am I right? Yeah. Steven, Steven has got like a, an amazing personality. He gets along with everybody in the room. He likes, he just lights everybody up when he, when he comes in. We're gonna take those two people and we're gonna hire them and boom, Bob Junko. Now on the volunteer side, the, the people that we've talked to from these training programs they're just like, it's like thousands of pounds was lifted off their shoulders because they already have imposter syndrome. Everybody does, but they have it really big because they used to be a chef and now they're a software developer and they don't even know if they can do the job. Well, now they have a very nice soft landing zone where they can start working on a real project with a real team. And it's part-time, we're not expecting anything dramatic from them. They can continue to work a survival job or do whatever they need to do in order to, but at the same time, they're building their, their abilities. And when they go to a job into the interview, they can say, oh yeah, well, I took this blah, blah, blah program. And now I'm currently working with new ID machine and we're building this product and it's got blockchain in it. And it's got blah, 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 and whatever, like whatever the project is, it can be a really, really exciting time to get experience on a team. Right. Um, and so, and of course, the important thing is guided and mentored by, by professionals. So we actually have partnerships with some of the companies in Calgary, like Duck Labs, which is a, which is a really popular software company, um, where 
and, and actually individuals that work out there in the industry that, that have come in and said, yeah, like we'd love to help you guys mentor these people. It's like very rewarding. If you're a senior developer and you've been coding for your whole life, it's kind of like projects are exciting and fun, but being able to give back and teach somebody else the skills that you've been doing your whole life is very rewarding and we find quite a few people um, are, are on board with that and they want to help out they want to be a part of it so that's really really cool um, and then th this one's a little bit interesting wouldn't it be cool if a software development team came together built an application and went you know what this thing actually co could have legs what if they actually got together and like started a, a company and then took the actual product to market? That's an option. That, I mean, it hasn't happened yet, but I can see it happening. Um, <laughs> and then of course, um, we have um, also a potential for um, an industry organization, like a not-for-profit or something that doesn't really have money and they need um, a software application built. Maybe one of these volunteer teams can build the software for them and then everybody wins. And we do have a couple of those ongoing right now. Um, so that's kind of the two pieces there. From, from our perspective, as you can tell, we're actually trying to help as many people as we possibly can. We're not um, a greedy company trying to make tons and tons of money, although that would be really great. Um, what we're trying to do is get through as many people through our program as possible. So our success is measured by how many people have gotten through our company. And I can tell you a couple really exciting stories. The very, one of the very first people that joined us, um, she was a control systems engineer. She joined our program and in, in our program, she was working on a project that required C Sharp, um, the programming language C Sharp. You guys are probably familiar with that. Um, she hadn't learned C Sharp before. And so after a while of working on that project and kind of getting her figured out or whatever, she applied for a job at Atabotics. And she got it because she had experience with C Sharp and she was a control systems engineer. So who, we were talking with you about skill layering. Your previous skills don't go away, they actually can add on. So if you have a financial background and then you take software development and then you tack those two together, well, hey, Neo Financial, we're looking for people with financial backgrounds that can do software development. So all those things layer together. She got a job working on the robots, like programming the robots at Atabotics. How cool is that? Um, we just recently, um, actually I just got notified yesterday that one of our, we call them Nimmers, uh, was, he was actually one of the team leads on one of our projects. Uh, he just landed a job as a CTO for a startup. So, so there's some, and there's, there's a whole bunch of stories just like that, that have happened. And we only started the company in August of last year. Um, we just incorporated in September of this year. So we were running as a, not, as a sole proprietorship for a while. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's super fun, super exciting. Like I said at the beginning, um, I would love to see this process duplicated for other areas like data science or, um, you know, uh, other, you couldn't really do it for doctors or whatever, but you know, for, for other organizations that, or other fields or, or um, industries that, that this could work, I'd love to see it a lot more because what happens when you um, are doing hands-on development for six months or a year, you're, you're now capable of being a, a, a key productive member on a team. If, that's, if you stick it around for about a, a year, year and a half, now you're approaching kind of an intermediate level uh, resource. And as long as somebody's gonna be willing to take a chance on you, you have that opportunity to, to earn the, the large uh, six-figure salaries and hopefully keep your, keep your feet inside of uh, Calgary and keep our industry growing. Um, there's a ton of stuff happening with really um, like, I don't know if you guys have seen the Platform Calgary building down on 9th Avenue across from the library. There's so many exciting things going in, on in Calgary right now. Um, we were just talking uh, before everybody showed up about um, 
you know, the way that the, the Silicon Valley mindset of, hey, let's all get together and partner and work together and see how we can help each other out. That sort of mindset is growing here and it's vibrant and exciting. Lots of companies are starting to bring their head offices here or at least office subsidiaries here. There's so much exciting things going on in Calgary right now. It's really great. I mean, what's our, uh, you know, our our uh, tagline now is Calgary be, be part of the energy or something like that, right? I mean, it, it's, it's a very exciting place to be.